Netherlands hope to win a World Cup trophy at home, sponsored by Gatorade. Welcome back to Jackson Valley and Dark and Taylor Twelman with you. United States leading Nigeria and playing well in this final tune-up for the World Cup itself. What is the coach Jurgen Klinsmann making of it? He's with Jeremy Chat now. Ian, thanks very much. Jurgen, a little bit of a different approach defensively in the first half. How did you like it? No, we like it. We like it a lot. I think we didn't let them uh, uh, create anything besides maybe a here and there corner kick. Um, so that looks really good. Um, we had to improve kind of over after 20, 25 minutes, really the passing, the playing out of the back, and especially making the field wide. I think the last 20 minutes uh, were excellent, were excellent, because then we kind of really uh, we speeded it up uh, and we found the outside positions, you know, going forward. And this is uh, something that can create a lot of chances. What can we take away from your decision, apparent decision at this point, not to start any subs in the second half? You know, you take away that we want them to grind it a little bit longer, the starting 11, go another at least 15, 20 minutes, and then we definitely start to bring some people in. Doesn't mean it's the Ghana lineup. No, it doesn't mean that. Thanks, Jürgen. No. Back to you, Ian. <laughs> Good try, Jeremy. <laughs> I, I don't believe it, do you? <laughs> well, I think he's happy. I think he's happy with what he's seeing. That's why we're seeing absolutely no changes. But of course, the game lasts 90 minutes, not 45. So that has to be sustained, and you'd expect Nigeria to come up with a little more. They brought on two subs. Ruben Gabriel, the midfield player, taking the place of John Obi Mikel. He's had to make way. And the uh, wide player, Baba Tumbe, uh, Baba Tunde, I should say, has come on as well. Only winning his fifth cap, just 21, player based in the Ukraine. Let's see what he can do. Vinny and I asked a question, why grind him now? You're nine days before Ghana. You're treating this as if it's a World Cup game. Listen, I know Jurgen wants us to believe this isn't the starting lineup against Ghana, but this is the first time since the training camp he's left the starting lineup after halftime. Well, I think you and me would have a bet, wouldn't we, that this won't be too far off. No chance. The starting lineup against Ghana. But I do understand why he's not going to say anything that might give it away. Some things are better secrets than others, mine. Here's Jermaine Jones. It's well cut up by Onazi. I think Stephen Keshi, a Nigerian coach, nicknamed Big Boss, will want more from his team in the second half particularly by way of an attacking threat they didn't have too much in the first half here's Ruben Gabriel the substitute who's come on blocked by Jones that was the first involvement of uh, Babatunde on that side he started the game at the Craven Cottage in London against Scotland and Scotland created a fair bit against a pretty patchwork Nigerian side that night Oshaniwa playing it inside. I'm told quite a few of the players had uh, malaria in London on the build-up to that game and uh, were not too well. I think Yaya Tori of the Ivory Coast has had a, a dose of that as well. He should be all right for the World Cup. But a little problem for the uh, Manchester City player. News breaking from all the camps all the time. Anxious times for, well, everybody really involved in uh, the biggest show in the game. Get the free kick for that. Well, Nigeria. They did only score 11 goals in qualifying. That's the fewest of any qualifiers for the World Cup. It, they only play the eight games, mind you. They did concede just four along the way. So the USA breaching that defense today goes down as a bit of an achievement. Moses is going to take this. Towards the back post, Amiobi got something on that, but not enough. And now, here's a US break again. And Jermaine Jones plowing through. Tries to find Bedoya, who's just forced him a little bit wide. There's still something on here, though. Fabian Johnson supporting the attack. It didn't quite reach him. What is it about the United States when Tim Howard defends a set piece and they break? 
Well, it happened, of course, four years ago against Algeria to some effect, as we know. Of course, the one thing that kept happening in, in 2010 was the US kept going behind in games yep. and having to try to claw it back. Quite often they did, but in the end, there was going to be a price to pay for that. Here's Onazi, plays for Lazio in Italy, famous club. Moses. Amiobi. Ooh, nearly broke for Moses. It just broke away from him. Too far for him to hit a shot. Here's the goal scorer, Altidore. Six substitutions allowed for either team. The result that really hurt Nigeria four years ago was losing to Greece by two goals to one. Had a 2 2 draw with South Korea and lost against Argentina despite a heroic display by the man in goal today, Vincent Enyema, who kept on denying Lionel Messi as if memory serves. A bit more business like in this second half, Baba Tumbe, Tunde. Moses, danger here. Goes out of play and it's a goal kick. Nigeria frustrated, foiled again. Aaron Johansson there coming towards you. The young striker has been getting plenty of goals in the Netherlands for AZ Alkmaar. You just have a feeling that he's going to have to play a huge part at the World Cup, don't you, Ian? Coming off the bench, if the United States need a goal, playing maybe in a wide position at times with, with Dempsey and Altidore up front, you just have a feeling that Johansson is going to be a viable option coming off that bench. Jürgen Kinsman did say again about Johansson yesterday, he was finding the workload, the training load, quite heavy. I think translated that probably meant been a little bit tired, which is why he didn't play any part in the Turkey game. It looks like he might play some here. Ruben Gabriel. Ambrose. Where's the end product for Nigeria? That would be the worry for Keshi, the coach. Well, and that falls on the shoulders of this man here. Anazi, yes, good idea, but nobody to attack the near post, and the flag was up for offside anyway. And Mark Clattenburg wasn't happy about something. It's interesting, Mikel was taken off at half time. He seemed to have a bit of a strop going on out there, didn't he, in the first half at times? Meanwhile, Clint Dempsey. Bedoya, Altidore goes to the near post. Oh, the idea from Bedoya was actually the right one, but he played it behind Dempsey. It was the execution that was missing. I think he sent the defence the wrong way with his eyes, and there was a bit of space for Dempsey. That's the second time this second half. Bedoya's found some space right side off the counter. That's also the second time he's made a bad decision in trying to find either Dempsey or Michael Bradley coming out of the midfield. The decision is there, the execution is lacking. It's obviously a, a vital part of the counter-attacking game, but the, the final ball on the break has got to be a killer one, really. They did it to some effect in the goal that separates this team so far. Oshaniwa won the header. Just his 11th cap, the left back is probably going to have to start now at the World Cup with the news that Helderson Echi Ajile will miss the tournament. And now he helps it forward. Babatunde has overrun it. And this time it's Matt Beasler. 
who's down with an injury. Every player that goes down is it's going to be accompanied by some measure of anxiety. I think the Sporting Kansas City man is going to be OK. A Major League Soccer Defender of the Year for 2012. Matt Beasler, he wasn't really dreaming of the United States then. He certainly is now. And talking of Major League Soccer, Portland Timbers hosting FC Dallas. Game of the Week presented by Five Hour Energy. That's Wednesday, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on ESPN2. And also live on the Watch ESPN app. Of all the three send-off games, Ian, Matt Beasler's looked the best tonight. You think it's a coincidence that Demarcus Beasley's on his left? Probably not. An understanding of what Demarcus Beasley wants to do in transition, and more importantly, the third straight start with Jeff Cameron to his right. You made the point earlier, Taylor. Understanding and playing a lot of games together, absolutely vital for the, the defenders. Johnson helps it forward. One thing we've seen in the last two games from the United States, they look like they've got a goal in them. And here's Bradley looking to do exactly that now. That one will go behind for a corner. It came off Oshaniwa. I just have found tonight that the understanding with Michael Bradley and Clint Dempsey has been very good off of Josie Altidore. Bedoya with the corner kick. This time well defended, it was Schiller Amiobi who was back there. Bedoya, he's in the front for Nantes. This time Mark Clattenburg gets in the way and apologises. And is <laughs> the villain all of a sudden of the American fans. Every ref's nightmare, that really. Pretty well respected Premier League official though, Clattenburg. Except he's not shy of controversy, is he? Oh, he's had a bit, yep, along the way, but what referee hasn't really. Oshiniwa. That's a pull ball, really, straight at Tim Howard, and nobody to tap the near post. And again, there are one or two glares going on among the uh, Nigerian players. Bradley with the pullback. I, I fancy in a competitive game that would have probably uh, ended up being a yellow card for Bradley. The referee is tending to take a more lenient view of things in the circumstances. Well, we saw that versus Turkey with the handball and Jeff Cameron. Well, the referee wasn't ready for it. When I blow the whistle, I think he's saying, because the US are lining up a wall. Nigeria, as it turned out, weren't even looking for a shot. And as he thought about hitting that one, Ambrose inside. Babatunde back, Manazi again. And that's good high pressing. From Jones and Altidore. One thing, looking at these uh, US players, they've been working very hard. They look fit, sharp, and ready to go. Now, Fabian Johnson's header was a loose one. Moses. The recovery worked good from Jeff Cameron. Nazi Cameron with the header away. Another player will be going to his first World Cup, as indeed was 17 of the US 23. It's just so good from Demarcus Beasley. Bradley. And the covering was good. They're never going to find Clint Dempsey, who's gone down. 
Mark Clattenburg immediately has a word with him and decides to call on the physio. Always a moment of worry. Now, is Dempsey all right? It's not good for the heart of the coaches for this period, is it? No, you get caught up in the heat of the moment. It's a nasty challenge. Looks more of a just knee to knee. You never want to speculate on injuries. But again, coaches, even Michael Bradley, Josie Altador. There's a pit in your stomach when you see one of your teammates go down. Graham Zeus is going to come on here for Alejandro Bedoya. He was pretty lively. Dempsey's back on his feet again. And seems okay. He certainly wouldn't want anything to happen to him. The number two goal scorer all time for the USA. How did Bedoya do? Good shift. Yeah, works hard, doesn't he? Works hard, very, very much so on the defensive side of things. I do think, though, he's still lacking in that execution of the final ball, particularly this second half. He's had two great opportunities to deliver that final ball and doesn't, but the amount of work he puts on the defensive side of things is the reason why he was in the starting lineup tonight. And I think he'll be in the starting lineup against Garner if I was having a bet on it as well. Former Boston college man, Alejandro Bedoya. That's hit long towards Schurler Amiobi, who's not made much impression up there. I'm a little bit surprised that the Nigerians haven't uh, made a change, there, unless they're uh, trying to save Emanike, their main man, for the World Cup itself. Onazi, here is Amiobi again. Decision goes the USA's way. Amiobi only played six minutes of, in all the qualifying, and he upset a few people by saying no when they tried to call him up for the Africa Cup of Nations. So a few people were surprised he got the, the call up for this. I always struggle when players turn down appearances and opportunities to play for their country. I think the reason was that Newcastle had already lost Papi Cisse and he kind of promised that he'd stay behind as the cover. So there were there were other circumstances surrounding it. Well, that's a horrible ball from Obwabona. Could be costly as well. Zussi looking to get involved. Bradley around the corner, lovely ball that. Altidore. Dempsey, this is good so far. Demarcus Beasley just forced a little bit wide. It was a nice looking attack from the US that. And Nigeria looking a little sloppy, giving it away. I spoke to a few people around the Nigerian camp yesterday and they fully expected a win here against the US. It's not happened for them. Just like Ghana, Portugal, and Germany do here. This is the role the United States loves, being an underdog. Bradley. Really does look terrific in there. Enjoying playing further forward. Moses very strong there. Fabian Johnson won the ball back brilliantly. Superb piece of play from the German-American. Fabian Johnson is having a very, very fine match. And this is where the changes start. Well, here it is. They had to introduce him. Emmanuel Emanike plays for Fenerbahce, the Turkish champions, helping them to the title this year. You're talking about recovering. We see it on the left side of Demarcus Beasley. And then tonight, Fabian Johnson, good going forward. But more importantly, when he goes forward, it's recognition that in transition to recover and help Jeff Cameron. Great work from Fabian Johnson. This substitution we're seeing now fueled by Gatorade, the introduction of Emmanuel Emanike, who scored four goals in Nigeria's win in the African Cup of Nations. He got three in just three appearances on the World Cup qualifiers as well. Can he terrorize the US defense? Now, Johnson's got to get back now. The break's on. And they've got a four against four for the moment here. Moses. Um, great covering from Jermaine Jones, who must have trodden on every blade of grass out there. 
I would say. Nothing wildly exciting about the USA here, but probably the most complete rounded display of the Klinsman era so far. Bradley, lovely ball. Dempsey, look at Altidore in space. Dempsey goes alone. And Inyema denies him. That would have been a wonderful goal. Dempsey wanted to go solo there. Altidore was screaming for it. Johnson. Taken out here by Enyema in the great season with Lille in France. Very much established as the number one there after a long battle now. Enyema has come up huge for Nigeria, but we've seen this three or four times tonight. Just quick combination between Bradley and Dempsey. I have absolutely no problem with this whatsoever from Clint Dempsey. Yes, Josie Altidore is off that left shoulder, but it's more important that his understanding with Michael Bradley and that combination play under Josie will then eventually open up Josie back door. Great play. And here's something to say in favor of Major League Soccer. A lot of people, including Jurgen Klinsmann, wondered whether Bradley and Dempsey would go off the boil returning to play in Major League Soccer. Quite the opposite has happened in Dempsey's case. He's re rediscovered his form in Seattle. Eight goals, three assists. And looking much his old self as well. And nothing wrong with what Bradley's doing either. Based, of course, now in Toronto, where he tells me he's very happy. Bradley. Altidore, Nigeria, looking rather tired, just beginning to wilt and make mistakes in the conditions. Just wonder whether the US sent blood a little here and maybe further goals. Right, it's no doubt at all, Taylor, the crowd like what they're seeing. And rightfully so. They haven't given up many chances, and going forward, they've looked extremely dangerous. Zusi, way too long. And I think he said the ball actually went out of play there on its journey. It's where it'll be a goal kick. The World Cup, remember, begins on Thursday on ESPN with the 2014 World Cup match day show at 3 Eastern. Then the first game, Brazil, the host, in what will be an amazing atmosphere against Croatia. Kickoff 3.30 Eastern. It's all on Watch ESPN as well, the app, if that's more useful to you if you're on the move. So we are now at, what, 22 minutes? And Jurgen Clinton's made one sub. Mm. And he's allowed six. By the way, the US, before they play Ghana, are going to play against Belgium behind closed doors on the opening day of the, the competition. And I'll tell you, you know more about what they're going to do and what the thinking is there. That Belgium game. Well, it's more of those things where I, I think, no, one, injuries, two, it's very close to the game against Ghana. I wouldn't be shocked if it's two different 11s, both 11s get 45 minutes. Yeah, just a little sharpening up exercise just to keep everybody ticking over. I think that's the thinking. Onazi. Bradley, beautiful ball, Altidore, he's held it up, he goes again and scores again, Josie Altidore, he's back. He's waited six months for a goal, now he's got two in one day. You saw it in the first half, Ian. The moment Josie Altidore tapped that first goal in, he felt lighter and more confident. But this is a real striker's goal. Great ball from Michael Bradley. 
But this is what Josie Altidore teases you as a U.S. soccer fan. Big, strong, physical, taking the ball down, taking the defender on, and burying it. What a great goal. Bradley at the heart of everything for the U.S. Nigeria have simply unraveled in this second half. I would say, from their perspective, this is an alarming display. Always with the rider. That this is a warm-up game, and the real thing lies just ahead. But to be perfectly honest with you, and I don't think we're seeing it uh, through bias eyes. The USA have outclassed Nigeria in the second half. Well, they've had their chances in the second half. I think it's more the execution of the game plan in. I just love the run from Josie Altidore. But when Josie wasn't scoring goals over the last four or five months, he's not bringing this down. He's not confident. He's not taking on that defender. The little tapping goal in the first half that does wonder for a striker that's been in a goal scoring drought. Any striker in the world loves that type of goal. Great finish from Josie Altidore. One goal all season in the Premier League. Two in one game here. Junior Jones, Nigeria, almost melting in front of the USA. And Bapa Enyema's saves, it might be more. Remember, he made that big save from Clint Dempsey as well. Emanike, offside. The US shooting out a bit of a warning to their rivals in Group G. You want to be peeking at the perfect time. And, and Ian, there's no secret, I've been on the negative bandwagon. I've been very questionable, I guess, and very concerned with how they look. But the game plan tonight is the exact game plan I think the United States needs to use at the World Cup. Defensively very sound, protect your back four, and then when you go forward, if one of those players is Michael Bradley and the other is Clint Dempsey, you got a shot to do something special. And it's no secret tonight that Josie Altidore has gotten the opportunities because when Bradley and Dempsey are on the same page, playing together, combining, defensively now you have to be wary of those two now you're left one-on-one -on -one as a center forward. Cramp beginning to bite. I think fitness has been a bit of an issue as well here. The U.S. look as if they are more ready physically than Nigeria. And I, that was another thing I was told by somebody close to the Nigerian camp that they could, they could, they could be a bit fitter. He said the Americans would be fitter. Off comes Kyle Beckerman. Substitution also sponsored by Gatorade as Mix Diskerud comes on to replace Kyle Beckham and Diskerud, the attacking midfield player. He was born and raised in Norway but has a mother from Arizona. Another great showing, 72, 73 minutes from Kyle Beckham, but this is now a different role for Mix Diskerud coming off the bench. Usually he's coming off the bench trying to provide that attacking spark. This is different. You're going into a World Cup, you need to prove to Jurgen Klinsmann and his staff that you can now come into a game and provide a little bit of defensive shape and cover for Jermaine Jones and Michael Bradley in the midfield. Is there a little part of Jurgen Klinsmann's mind that says at this point, 2-0 up inside the last 20 minutes, I'll take off Dempsey and Bradley and, and, and wrap them up in cotton wool now for Brazil. You would think so. No doubt about it. But he always surprises us, doesn't he? Brad Guzan there, the very good number two goalkeeper. On comes Michael Uchebo, based in Belgium, who did score in that game against Scotland. Well, he was credited with it anyway. The shot was looked to me like it was going to hit the corner flag till it hit Grant Hanley and went in. But uh, he's been credited with it anyway on for his uh, just his fourth cap. Zussi. USA in firm control. Bradley with another great ball, and Dempsey couldn't take advantage. You'd have to say here, 
Michael Bradley has been just fantastic in the second half. He's been fantastic the entire game. Covers so much ground. But I think a big part of that is now you relieve Michael Bradley the thought that he has to be in defensive cover. When Kyle Beckerman and Jermaine Jones are behind him, now he knows, you know what, I can risk it. I can go forward. I can run those channels. I can combine with Clint Dempsey. When he's just in there with Jermaine Jones or just in there with Kyle Beckerman, there's a part of Michael Bradley that still wants to rely on that base saying, I need to recover defensively. Yeah. So 4-2-3-1, perhaps it will be, and not the diamond. Timmy Chandler will come on to replace Demarcus Beasley. Chandler, who's just uh, engineered uh, a transfer from uh, Nuremberg, who were relegated from the Bundesliga, but he'll stay in it because he's going to Eintracht Frankfurt. Big applause for Demarcus Beasley. Splendid comeback to him, really, under Jürgen Klinsmann, back to the uh, the national colours as a first-choice left-back. There's no doubt this performance, when it's viewed by uh, the Ghana camp, might cause a little consternation. Good team, though. Good team. Zussi's ball in, and, well, Cameron was arriving. His only goal so far for his country in the 4-2 home defeat against Belgium. That was the last time, by the way, the USA did lose at home. If they avoid defeat today, and it looks like they will, it'll be 17 unbeaten home games. Emenike. I've well, seen a lot of him so far. Clever piece of play. Cameron recovered very well, though. Stays alive. Moses. Corner kick for Nigeria. Onazi. Attempted cross from Baba Tunde has not made too much impression. Was charged down. Nigeria seem to have run out of gas a little in this game. Gas and maybe a little belief as well. Away by Fabian Johnson. And they've got themselves in a the pickle here. It's a two against one. Junior Jones. Zussi just forced a little wider than perhaps he should have been. Altidor nods it back cleverly. Discarude shot. Dempsey was battling away. And the chance goes away. And probably they needed to do better with that. Look at the recovery from Michael Bradley. He's looking 40 yards down the field for a layoff from Clint Dempsey. And immediately when that ball turns over... He's retreating 50 yards in the 78th minute to break up that attack from Nigeria. A goal four years ago as well against uh, Slovenia. Good one as well. Winning his 86th count tonight, Bradley. Here you he can, is in possession now. You can run like that, Ian, when you break the beep test. And there are one or two of those, I've heard. <laughs> Very tough in, in these conditions. Not as hot as it can be at this time of year in uh, Jacksonville, but hot enough. Imagine 60 degrees is hot for me. Did that guy have a play? It looked like it. And the crowd was screaming for that. It did look quite a long way over the line. Babatunde. Here's Emenike. Lucebo. Emenike again. Crosses an inaccurate one. Altidore for the US. Suddenly looking super sharp. What a good looking ball that is towards Dempsey, but this time Enyema is there.
Well, I thought there were signs that Altidor was rediscovering his belief and confidence in the last game. He didn't score, in fact, he missed a few, but he was lively. Today, he's got the reward. We want Ghana, is the chant from the US fans. Emanike Howard comes and gets that. He wants that clean sheet on cap number 100. During the World Cup, Howard will become the US's most capped goalkeeper. Casey Keller currently has that record on 102. Now then, we are going to see Omar Gonzalez, I think, shortly. And off comes Josie Altidore. This is a clever little ploy by Jurgen Klinsmann. He's doing this so that Altidore gets a huge standing ovation for his two-goal display. Confidence is a funny thing, Ian. Good psychological move. No doubt about manager. it. And what everyone forgets now is, yes, the goals have come tonight, and the second one in particular is a striker full of confidence. But when you're confident, now what happens? He keeps possession. When the weight of the world is on your shoulders, mm. you're giving the ball away in bad spots, like we saw in the first 25, 30 minutes. He gets the tap, and immediately, his immediate switch, his touch is cleaner, his layoffs are better, and he's combining with Clint Dempsey, and then ultimately the second goal was spectacular. Yep, you're right, the 10 ton weight lifted. You never want to go overboard because it is a, it is a friendly when all is said and done, but there are grounds for definite optimism in the way the US have gone about this job today. Interesting, too, because now Omar Gonzalez comes in for Josie Altidore, and these are types of situations that you may see in the World Cup. Omar Gonzalez plays center back. Jeff Cameron now moves to right back. Very interesting, but he held up three fingers to Jeff Cameron. It's almost as if the United States are in a little bit of a 3-5-2 here. A little misunderstanding there between Gonzalez and Tim Howard. It looks like he didn't hear Howard's shout. Well, surely must have been one. Moses, Flack stays down, Emenike, Uchebo is arriving and never does reach him, Bradley was back defending too, now the job of playing furthest forward goes to Junior Jones and he pick a good ball for Dempsey who's enjoying himself up there making those late runs and probably could have had one or two more. Here's Uchebo. Arshan Iwa. Frankly, as well as the US have played here, Nigeria have been pretty awful. I agree. And we saw it in Philadelphia during the week against Greece. They lacked ideas going forward. And yes, Greece plays with 11 guys behind the ball. Uchebo. But they just lack the final ball. They get within 25, 30 yards of goal in positions like this. No creativity. Emanike with a chance, though, and Howard with a great save. That's what he's all about. Not much to do, but when he was needed, he pulled out a very, very decent stop. Well, and here we are talking about Nigeria lacking ideas going forward, and then Emanike, look at this spot, right off the back shoulder of... That's a dangerous spot of Omar Gonzalez and Matt Beasler immediately after that play having a conversation. Gonzalez, another player who'll be just looking to build his confidence a little. And Nigeria just coming to life a little late on. Ambrose lays it wide. He's the Celtic man again. He's 
part of that Celtic side who did well against Barcelona a year or two back in the, the Champions League. Seven minutes remaining, the US have to keep their concentration. Been a few changes now. Gonzalez into the defence. Babatunde. Good covering, Obwabona trying to play the role of a striker, the central defender, and it means the break is on again for the US. This ball is cut back, there's a chance for Dempsey. Chandra had made a very good run forward, Bradley. Diskerud, good save again from Enyema. Don't think Diskerud really quite got hold of it. Gonzalez just caught for pace a little. There might be something for Nigeria here. Moses, penalty. Another penalty given away by the US, who suddenly find themselves under pressure late on in the piece here. Well, the problem for the United States, Ian, is they've been so effective on the break. But then you come into a game, you've made some substitutions, one with Timmy Chandler going forward, and then there, Omar Gonzalez, Matt Beasler, tracking back, doing anything he can to get a hold of Victor Moses. But that is the issue. When you break, you leave spaces open on the counter. It's Moses to take it. As against Turkey, a late penalty conceded and scored very coolly. Moses for Nigeria, who pull it back to 2-1, and just give a little concern for Jurgen Klinsmann. Well, the hardest part of these games are the last 20 minutes, because you're making constant substitutions. So the rhythm of the game, the flow of the game changes immensely, but now this is a training exercise for those subs coming into this game Omar Gonzalez, mixed discarude. Absolutely no problem with the penalty call from me, but you're talking about changing the flow. Can the substitutes now in this game get a result out of this game? A seventh goal for his country for Victor Moses from the spot. Chris Wondolowski's come on to replace Clint Dempsey late on. And the USA just have to be professional here and keep the door locked and attain the win that they fully deserve from this fixture but Nigeria have suddenly found some energy having looked rather tired and fading Jermaine Jones won it back in there pretty well and the sensible thing here is just to keep the ball Cameron's gone to right back now Beasley, whose challenge gave away that penalty kick. Uchebo. Jermaine Jones. All the way through for Zussi. Ruben Gabriel has missed out in... The centre of midfield, Zussi, cuts into the hole and Discarude would have had a wonderful opportunity there had he been able to bring that under control. They've had enough chances for more than two. They have, but it's more important now to have an understanding of what the game provides you, what the game's showing you. Yes, you've been very good on the break, but your defensive shape and possession is more important here. Hammered out of harm's way by Beesler. It's not a coincidence either, Ian, that Emenike has come into this game and provided a huge spark for Nigeria up front.
sort of looked out of the game until that penalty. Emanike takes on Cameron for pace. It's a good little burst of pace from him. It is just a goal kick. Emanike is very, very frustrated. But the headline maker is Josie Altidore. Two goals. My continental tire is man Josie of the match. Josie this, goal, Altidore. Yes, Altidore. this goal, yes, it's easy. Yes, it's simple. But it's the most important goal of the send-off series for the United States because now the same player has this confidence. Big, strong, physical, and very confident putting the ball in the back of the net. Must have been that Beats by Dre commercial he was in this week. <laughs> scoring rate of one every 94 minutes. No US player in history can beat that. Of course, it's uh, only after a few caps for Wondolowski, 20 in fact, so far, and not against the elite of the world game. Nonetheless, nine goals and 20 caps, pretty good. Three minutes of stoppage time there will be. should be well clear in this game as it is just holding on a little or looking at the clock anyway late on Bradley Fabian Johnson and Jones was trying to pull the trigger on it seat about 12 rows back only the second time by the way these two countries have ever met the other one was 19 years ago when the USA won by three goals to two John Harks Marcelo Balboa and Kobe Jones the scorer on that occasion Rude. Uh, keep your fingers crossed saying it. The good news here is, as well, no injuries for the United States. And don't mind really how many countries have been afflicted by some bad injuries on the build up. That is good news, and you hope everyone stays out of trouble very late on here, too. Well, Ian, the little thing to keep in mind is that the last 10 minutes he brought on Omar Gonzalez, they're playing with three center backs. He did that a lot in the Gold Cup when they won. I'm not sure if the United States are up in the World Cup if he doesn't go to this formation that he's gone to in the last 10 minutes here. It's not quite as good since the change was made. Moses plays it forward and Ambrose, but he was offside. He was offside, it wouldn't have counted. And that might be just about it, you'd think. Three minutes of added time, we're beyond that now. Not too many reasons, I think, for Mark Clattenburg to have too much more. And that 
is it. The USA are off to Brazil and the World Cup with a win under their belt. Three wins, in fact, in these warm-up games. And that's quite an important scalp. The African champions, Nigeria. No doubt about the star man, Josie Altidore. Scoring not once for the first time since December, but twice. Stephen Keshi, the coach, who's got a home in California in the Sacramento area, knows Jurgen Klinsmann pretty well, shakes hands, and we can now go and join Josie Altidore, I think, the hero of the moment, with Jeremy Shaw. Thanks so much, Ian. Josie, it had been a long drought. How did it feel to score those two goals? It felt fine. I mean, uh, the biggest thing was for us to work out some things that maybe we weren't sure about, trying some different things again today, and I thought the team responded really well. Could you describe the two goals for me, please? Yeah, it's great team play. I mean, we've been playing so good football the past two years, and uh, the first goal was, was beautiful give and go with, with, with Fabian and uh, Alejandro, and the second goal was Mikey's great vision, and then uh, just having a shot on goal, so it was good. I know that you said your self-confidence was never diminished by going so long without scoring. But how would you describe how this performance tonight might affect you going forward? I mean, to be honest, Jeremy, I mean, I, feel, I felt fine before I feel fine now. The most important thing is, especially being part of this team now for such a long time, is how we perform. And going to a tournament like this, we want to make sure that we're performing at a level where we give ourselves a good chance, and I think we're going to do that. How do you assess the performance overall? I mean, I thought it took us a while to get into the game, but after the 25 minutes, we started playing better. And look, it, it could always be better, but I thought we created enough chances tonight. Josie, congratulations. Thank you. Back to you, Ian. Thank you much, Jeremy. Josie Altidore, just the confidence boost he was looking for. Some happy fans here. Some of them will be off to Brazil on quite an adventure. Your final thoughts, Taylor? Two things the United States and Jurgen Klinsmann wanted out of the, these three send-off series games. One, continuity defensively. They did that tonight. Two, in number one in the mind of Jurgen Klinsmann was to get Josie Altidore to score goals. Two great goals for Josie Altidore tonight. So it's a good story. We bring you from Jacksonville, the United States, looking sharp and in the mood, beating Nigeria 2-1 as we hand it back to Bob Lee in Rio. Thank you, Ian. It is the third time on June 7th Josie Altidore has played for his country. Last year he scored against Jamaica. Two years ago he scored against Canada three years ago, actually, and tonight the two goals. You're as good as your last match approaching a World Cup three straight wins. All right. The takeaway is dot, dot, dot. Well, from Josie, I mean, he's got to feel great. If you could bottle that, that would be wonderful. I think in general, though, uh, in a way, a classic American performance. Bottle up that midfield, be compact, be organized, pick and choose your moments. And then, as if we need reminding, Michael Bradley is Call. the most important player on this team, regardless of where Jurgen Klinsmann puts him in a formation, and he showed again tonight. Yeah, and on that note, I think having those two holding defensive midfields and allowing Michael Bradley, what he does best is hunt the ball when he doesn't have it. And he has the cover, which allows him to just kind of run around, find the ball, win possession, and then the U.S. can counter off of it. And it was very effective tonight. Tim Howard tasting that clean sheet, couldn't get it with a penalty kick late on the neck that he got his 100th cap. It is evening, it's just starting on this Saturday night in Rio, and we will cap a U.S. 2-1 victory when we come back. Our location at the tip of Copacabana Beach in Rio de Janeiro, our headquarters throughout the entirety of FIFA World Cup 2014, Casey Keller, Lexi Lawless, Bob Lee. Nine days for the Ghana match, Packed, they fly tomorrow, and they have a lot of good memories. The United States national team to carry them on a long flight. Yeah, I mean, I think when you look at this team right now, Jurgen Klinsmann, in my mind, is taking the best collection of individual players ever assembled. Remains to be seen whether it's the best team, but we're going to find out. I just think it's key. I mean, you, you get some confidence now. You've won some. He's Jurgen Klinsmann has also been able to, to tinker a little bit, but I think. This is what we saw tonight is what we're going to see against Ghana, more or less. Maybe one change, maybe not. But it looks like the style that best suits this team. Let's get this thing going. <laughs> it starts soon enough. It begins in five days. We will have, of course, complete reports on SportsCenter. We will next see you on Wednesday for a full production here, a full program at 3 p.m. Eastern time with our FIFA World Cup 2014 review. We send you from Rio de Janeiro, south of the equator in Brazil, to the X Games in Austin, Texas.